Welcome to On Deck with Marlin Magazine. I'm Sam White. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Marlin. And with us this morning, we have a familiar face for a lot of us, Coach Jimmy Johnson. Welcome aboard, sir. Sam, good to be with you. Uh, first, a little background. Uh, you won a college national championship with the University of Miami. You were back-to-back -back Super Bowl champions with the Dallas Cowboys in the 90s. You're an analyst on Fox uh, NFL Sunday, and you've been inducted into the Football Hall of Fame. So nine years ago, you decided you were going to start a high-profile <laughs> fishing tournament in the Florida Keys. Was retirement boring? I mean... Well, b before we get into fishing, I got to add some more, you know, accolades to what you talked about. You know, I'm also in the College Football Hall of Fame, besides the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm in the Broadcasting Hall of Fame with Fox Sports, so that's pretty good. Plus, uh, I played for a national champion, undefeated team at University of Arkansas. Now you've got all the accolades. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, I, I, I love South Florida. I, I love fishing. I love being on the water, uh, not only fishing, but, you know, do a little bit of scuba diving. And uh, it's it just uh, it, it's a great way to, to entertain people. Uh, it's a great way to spend time with your family. Uh, so fishing has always been uh, a real positive for me. Sure. Sure, absolutely. Now, let's talk about Jimmy Johnson's Fish Week and the, uh, and the Quest for the Ring Championship. So how did that event start and, and how did it proceed to where it is today? Well, you know, it started out uh, fairly small, just a local fishing tournament. And then my producer, uh, Todd Roy, he got involved. And then Seminole Hard Rock Casino and Hotel, they got involved. You know, they went with the Dolphin Stadium to put their name on Dolphin Stadium. And they wanted to be involved with the entertainment and the tourism here in South Florida. And so what better way than have a fishing tournament? And, uh, you know, Seminole Hard Rock, uh, in addition to, you know, contender and Yamaha and Papa's Pilar, They've been great sponsors for us. And, and so once Seminole Hard Rock got involved with Todd Roy, I mean, this thing just skyrocketed. We had about 30 boats, you know, there the first few years and had a couple of celebrities, you know, Terry Bradshaw and Howie Long and Mike Ditka and, you know, on and on. And so it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And now Michael Jordan, you know, he's come down and, you know, Brian Greasy and Desmond Howard. So we've had great celebrities and everybody wants to be involved with it. Uh, it's, you know, we had like 130 boats here last year. So it is just skyrocketed into a great tournament. It, the best parties, the best gifting. And then on top of that, you know, we give some money to charity uh, besides a fishing tournament. Yeah, and I know that the charitable aspect of those events is really near and dear to your heart. So let's talk about the charities that you support and really the, the reasoning behind that as well. Well, you know, one of the big charities, uh, we, we go with the foundation with Tranquil Shores Drug and Alcohol Abuse Center over in St. Petersburg. And then they've got another facility in Austin, Texas. And uh, that, that helps especially young people uh, that have an abuse problem and can't afford you know, to go to a rehab center. Uh, so that foundation really supports them. Besides that, we've gone with uh, UM Athletics, uh, Muscular Dystrophy uh, for Fishing. And so, you know, we've given over $500,000, you know, to charities over the years. And that's really something that's important because a lot of people, when they look at a high profile fishing tournament, they see us giving away these big checks to these teams, but they don't realize the impact that these events really have on the local community and the regional communities that, that we support, whether it's through conservation, whether it's through the charitable aspects of these events. So, so really, you know, congratulations and thank you from the fishing community for, for all you do. That's really, that's, that's great work. So. Well, I, I, I thank you, Sam. And like you say, it, it really helps a lot of people in need. And of course, the way the world is today and the way it is here in the States, uh, a lot of people are in need. And so, you know, the charitable events that we have, it helps a lot of people. And in fact, we will probably expand that on top of the charities that we've uh, helped in the past. Sure, absolutely. Um, so you've got eight champions in the ring of honor. How much fun is it to award those rings to those guys at the end of the tournament? 
Yeah, you know, I, I am amazed. Of course, you know, I, I love my Super Bowl rings and my national championship rings, and that's kind of how it got started. But these fishing tournaments and the winners of the fishing tournament go into the ring of honor. We, we, you, like you say, eight of them so far, going to nine of them. And, and it, it ends up, they like those rings, I think, as much as they like the, the check for winning the tournament. You know, they take great pride in having a championship a ring, and the rings are absolutely beautiful. Really, Todd Roy has, you know, uh, I think helped design the rings, and a lot of them are fashioned after Super Bowl rings uh, in the past. You know, I, I know the the one uh, two years ago was real close to the New England Patriots Super Bowl ring. But those fishing captains and the, the fishing uh, tournament, they, uh, they love getting into the Ring of Honor. They have a big dinner with all the past champions. Uh, we really entertain them well. Wow, I, I can't, I can't imagine. I've, uh, I've been fortunate to to be successful here and there, but absolutely nothing on that level. That's just a, that sounds amazing. Uh, well, well, Sam, let me let me throw this in real quick. Just, just to give you an example. Wow. Uh, there's a, a, a mock-up of the Super Bowl ring. Here's one of our fishing championship rings and another championship ring. So I tell you what, you know, those guys like to put that ring on their finger. Plus, it's a, you know, it's, it's a little bit of pride for them to walk around the marina with that championship ring on. They won the tournament. Absolutely. You know it. And that, that bragging rights, uh, that's worth, uh, <laughs> that's worth a lot. That is worth a lot. So, um, tell you what, we, we talked about the celebrity program a minute ago. Is it, is it difficult to recruit those celebrities and those athletes to come to South Florida and fish? Do you have to twist any arms or? Two of my former players that work with Todd Roy, you know, Greg Mark and Bruce Ebers, uh, they do a great job of contacting them and they really treat them like celebrities, you know, I mean, they, they, they're picked up at the airport. They, you know, they have first-class facilities, uh, and they enjoy it. You know, number one, they enjoy being around each other and seeing, you know, friends from the past. Uh, but um, I, I think because you know, the tournament itself is such a first-class tournament, I mean, the parties are unbelievable. The food is unbelievable. And because of the parties and the food, uh, those celebrities have a great time. They enjoy themselves. So it's not just going on the boat and fishing with various people. They enjoy being with each other at the parties. Sure. Do any of them ever get seasick? Uh, no, you know, we've had a couple of years where the wind was blowing pretty hard, and, and, and I'm sure a couple of them might have got a little queasy, but uh, uh, most of them know, you know they know they're going to be involved in the fishing tournament and they're going to be on the water. So uh, if they tend to get a little bit sick, you know, they say, well, today I may just stay and party with you guys. I may not go on the boat. <laughs> smart, smart choice. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so Jimmy Johnson's Fish Week is going to expand this year. We understand you're moving to Atlantic City, New Jersey. We're going to show the Northeast guys how to party like South Florida does. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Well, yeah, this, you know, this came up this year. And, you know, of course, we've got a, a long-term commitment with Seminole Hard Rock. But uh, we're going up there, and it's going to be a guaranteed $1 million payout and probably more. Sam, the, the big thing about it, the Atlantic City Sports Commission, they got involved in it. And, and then on top of that, the Golden Nugget uh, Marina is a fantastic marina. And so we're going to work out of the Golden Nugget Marina. So, you know, everybody there in Atlantic City has kind of jumped on board because they, they saw how successful it was here in South Florida. And they said, you know, hey, they've got celebrities coming from all over. It's a great tournament. Uh, everybody enjoys it. They know that it's first class all the way. They said, hey, let's have a tournament up here in Atlantic City. So a lot of people have gotten involved with this thing. Sure. Now that you have a successful track record of what you've been able to uh, to show everyone in South Florida, that's absolutely. And that should bring in just a whole nother audience because that's a, that's a great area for uh, for sports in general, but especially for sport fishing. Well, you know, and I think too, because, you know, yeah, just like South Florida, you know, the tourism is so big. 
mm-hmm. um, you know, with all the various hotels and, you know, the marinas and et cetera. You know, Atlantic City has the same thing. Uh, and so, you know, tourism, you know, that's their livelihood. And so the more people that they can bring in, you know, it, they're going to have, you know, people, you know, come back year after year after year. And so it's big for them, too. You know, it can expand the tourism there in, in Atlantic City. Sure. Absolutely. Um, Jimmy, you and I have done some interviews in the past, and most people might not realize this, but you have a real passion for sport fishing and especially for offshore blue water fishing, and you fish a lot by yourself. You've actually caught a bunch of blue marlin solo by yourself, which is something most other people have, have never experienced. So just tell us what that's, what's that like? No captain, no mate, just, just you on that boat, man. Well, first of all, you know, I enjoy, I, I, I hate waiting on people. You know, and so, you know, I like uh, to have the boat ready to go. Whatever time I wake up, it may be five o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, I may piddle around the house until six or so or until daylight. Uh, but I may get out there and, and, and I may have already been on the water for an hour or two before the sun comes up. Mm-hmm. And uh, that way I don't ever have to wait on anybody. I mean, and, you know, being involved in football and coaching for, you know, 40 years or so, yeah, it, you know, there, there was a lot of stress. Well, out there on the water, there's no stress. And especially if you're by yourself, there's no pressure on me to catch a fish. Uh, I don't have to entertain anybody. And so I go out there by myself and just enjoy myself. I'll put it on autopilot, put three or four lines out. And, and pe- when people say, you, you've caught blue marlin by yourself? I, I've never caught a blue marlin. Well, I have, and I've caught five of them by myself, released them uh, at the boat. Uh, it, uh, it was a great experience. Now, a couple of times, you know, after about three or four hours of fighting, that fish, I'm saying, I don't know about this. I wanted to cut the line. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I, I have caught five blue marlin by myself uh, and brought them to the boat, worked the boat, worked the rods back and forth. Wow. That's, that's really an amazing accomplishment. That's something that very few other people can say that they've ever done. So uh, I, I did take pictures, and so I've got proof. <laughs> oh, oh, no, we believe you. We believe you. No. Uh, now, are you, uh, when you're out there fishing, are you, a, are you a lure guy, or do you prefer natural baits, and do you have any favorites? You know, because I'm trolling uh, 95% of the time, I'm a lure guy. Now, I will put some rig ballyhoo behind the lure, you know, and so, you know, I catch a lot of dolphin or wahoo or, or even, you know, sailfish or marlin. Uh, and, and so uh, most of the times it, it's working with some type of lure. You got any favorite colors or? Blue and white. <laughs> I love blue and white. And, there you go. And, uh, and then occasionally I'll throw a pink in there too. Uh, so, mm-hmm. uh, but I'll change it around. You know, I, I, I have, you know, different things that I try, you know, you know, I'll have like the little rattle, green little rattle jets for the tuna at the, they got the Alamorada hump there to where there's a little bit of a rise and, you know, it goes from 500 feet up to about 250 feet and there's a lot of bait there. And so I, I catch a lot of fish right there, about 13 miles offshore. But I'll, I'll go, if, if I'm going to go for Wahoo, I, I might be three or four miles offshore. If I'm going for Mahi Mahi Dolphin, uh, I might go 30 miles offshore. Uh, it just depends on how I feel that day. Uh, what kind of boat are you running these days? I, I've got two CVs, uh, 39 CVs. I got one twin diesel, uh, uh, and then I've got one that's got quad uh, 350 Mercury Volado. So I've got the inboard and the outboard. I can go whichever direction I want to go. If I want to go fast, I go with those outboards. You know, if I want to go economically, I'm going to go with the diesel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great, great choices, great boats. Uh, absolutely. Um, what advice would you give to a first-time participant in either one of your tournaments, in, in the South Florida tournaments or this new one coming up? If, if someone is contemplating fishing a tournament like this, what, what advice would you offer them? I, I would I'd say one thing, enjoy. Enjoy because, you know, experience everything. You know, a lot of times... Um, I think when you've been out on the water all day long, you, you're tired, you know, and maybe you want to just relax a little bit. You know, understand after being out on the water all day, we've got some great parties. You know, the people, you know, they walk away from the tournament and they say, man, I, I love this tournament, you know, 
regardless of catching the fish, the parties were just outstanding. You know, the gifting, you know, like a couple thousand dollars in gifting, you know, they go through that gifting experience. It's amazing. You know, here you got these people and some of them are probably millionaires. <laughs> they go through and man, it's free. I want that shirt. I want that, you know, those shorts. I, I want these lures. You know, I want this, that one thing or another. The gifting experience, just that in itself is a fun, fun afternoon. Uh, and so I, I would advise them just, hey, take it all in. Take it all in. You know, enjoy the parties. Enjoy the dinners. Enjoy the gifting experience. And on top of that, you're going to have great fishing. Yep. yep. Couldn't, couldn't have said it better ourselves because, as you know, that there's only going to be a few people that actually win money doing tournaments. It's, it's the experience. It's that enjoyable aspect of the entire, the entire deal. So. Yeah, you know, one thing that we have adjusted, Todd Roy uh, did this a couple of years ago. You know, some of the winners won, you know, a humongous amount of money. And, and we said, hey, let's spread it out a little bit more. And so we've got a celebrity, you know, you know prize and celebrity uh, tournament to where they get, uh, you know, money or they can give to their charity of their choice, you know, for catching so many fish, one thing or another. So we've got that as apart from the regular tournament, then you got the fun fishing, you know, and so we spread it out to where we try to give as much, you know, to as many people as we can. So it's just not one winner. Uh, Now the one winner, the top couple of winners, you know, that they get a lot, but they get autographed footballs, you know, they get the rings, you know, they get, you know, pictures and on and on and on. So, they get a lot of stuff besides a big check if they win. And also knowing that they're supporting the worthy charities, we're supporting conservation, we're doing a lot of great work in a lot of great different places. So that's, uh, it's, it's amazing the impact that these events really have. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and everybody that's ever been involved in our tournament, you know, we, you know, thousands of people, not only the celebrities, but the thousands of the guys walking off the street that, you know, some people come and they'll go to the parties and everything and probably ne- never even get on a boat. They, every one of them, uh, they walk away and say, hey, that's one of the greatest times I've ever had. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what it's all about. That's exactly what it's all about. I think everybody, you know, they, they think about a fishing tournament and the first thing they think was just being out on the boat. Uh, I, I think, you know, if they want to experience something that they'll never experience again in their lifetime. Uh, being around some of those celebrities, you know, being around the Terry Bradshaw's, Howie Long's, Mike Ditka's, Michael Jordan's, you know, <laughs> being with those people and having a good time laughing and cutting up. You know, I, I think that they say, if when they think fishing tournament, they think, well, I'm going to be on a boat all day and then, and that's it. And this is more, more than a fishing tournament. Uh, this is a great experience. Yeah, and we invite everybody that uh, that wants to come fish to to check it out. Jimmy Johnson's Fish Weekend now coming to Atlantic City this summer. That sounds like a great time. It is a great time. I'm looking forward to it. Yep, should be wonderful. Well, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, I'm good. I think we've covered it, Sam. Well, listen, we really appreciate you spending a few minutes out of your busy day with us this morning. Uh, hope you have a great day. Keep in touch, and we'll uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you real soon. Okay, tight lines. Yes, sir. Take care.